WSTKS FM Worldwide, digital collaborative learning for the 21st century. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. It's Professor Schwartz yet again with a fresh mug of dark roast coffee and my feline buddy Onyx the Cat coming to you from my table by the front window of the Collaborative Cafe on the ground floor of the WSTKS FM Worldwide Studios. Welcome to week 12 of the course. In today's program, we'll examine three collaborative hazards to watch out for in your student learning team's late semester collaboration. We'll dive right in following a quick musical break. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone. As promised, we're looking today at three late-semester collaborative hazards to avoid in your remaining weekly coursework as part of your student learning team. Here they are in reverse order. Late-semester collaborative hazard number three to watch out for and do your best to avoid is letting everything fall onto the shoulders of a single team member. In pedagogical terms, the phenomenon I describe is known as social loafing. Social loafing typically happens when some or possibly most members of a student learning team fail to pull their weight, leaving a more conscientious member to pick up the slack. But riding on others' coattails like that creates an unfair situation where one student does most of the work, while others get a free ride. That type of dynamic is hardly collaborative, though, and leaves the responsible student feeling stressed and resentful because they carry the full weight of the project on their back alone. To avoid having everything fall onto the shoulders of one student, however, don't leave things ambiguous when it comes to your remaining weekly assignments and collaborative project number three. Divide these instead into smaller tasks and assign clear responsibilities to each team member. That will ensure that everyone understands what's expected of them and how their contribution fits into the bigger picture. Schedule regular meetings or check-ins to track progress and address any roadblocks. That allows for early intervention if someone is falling behind and keeps everyone accountable for their particular tasks. Of course, open, transparent, and routine communication between all members of your learning team will go a long way toward stopping the issue before it starts. It's important to keep in mind that this course has a collaborative design after all, meaning that students work together throughout the semester and learn from each other, while at the same time cultivating a variety of real-world employability skills. Moving right along, let's turn now to late semester collaborative hazard number two to watch out for during the final weeks of your work together. Here, I'm talking about passive participation by one or more members of your team. This particular stumbling block, closely related to letting one team member take care of everything, is brought about by students who lurk along the periphery of a learning team without actually contributing to discussions, assignments, or supporting their teammates. It's one more way to inadvertently hinder overall progress toward your remaining collaborative goals as the course winds down. An easy way around passive participation is instead to redefine roles and responsibilities for everyone on the team. 
Take the time now to review and reestablish clear paths for each member based on their particular interests, abilities, and the overall workload distribution between the students comprising your team. Now, it might seem like a pointless exercise, but quick team huddles like the kind I suggest are helpful for review and to remind everyone of their position and commitment to the overall collaborative effort, especially late in the semester when all of us are busy tying up loose ends. Finally, let's take a look at the number one late semester collaborative hazard to avoid at all costs, the Disappearing Act. This major pitfall occurs when teammates go radio silent, miss deadlines, or suddenly become impossible to contact, leaving the rest of your team hanging and creating a great deal of unnecessary stress. The Disappearing Act can include situations like teammates dropping in and out at whim with no advance notice, saying they are too busy with this or that, ignoring communication with or commitments made to the team, or taking the attitude that the rest of the world somehow stops spinning on its axis (laughs) when they are away from campus for whatever reason. You've probably run into this kind of thing before now. It's not really a good way to treat the people you work with, though, is it? Avoid this number one late semester collaborative hazard by reviewing your list of core team values and team contract that all of you developed together back in week three. Remember, too, that effective collaboration is an ongoing democratic and mutually supportive process in which all members of a learning team should be involved from start to finish. With that aim in mind, hold yourselves accountable to the expectations and points laid out within your core team values and team contract. Ensure that you are part of regular check-ins for the final weeks of the course, utilize project management tools, and keep everyone informed about team progress toward your remaining collaborative goals. WSTKS FM Worldwide, digital collaborative learning for the 21st century. If you find this podcast helpful, Be sure to hit like, share, and subscribe. Before we wrap up today's program, let's quickly recap the three late semester collaborative hazards to watch out for in reverse order. Number three, Watch out for and avoid letting everything fall onto the shoulders of one student on your learning team. Number two, watch out for passive participation by any lurking team members. And number one, watch out for the dreaded and annoying disappearing act by one or more students on your team. Avoid these hazards by scheduling a team huddle this week, week 12, to revisit and review your list of core team values and team contract from week three to remind every student on your team of their overall collaborative goals and commitments. Enable and empower your student learning team by joining me again in the Collaborative Cafe for further tips, tricks, and advice based on my almost 30 years of collaboration with thousands of undergraduates at three Big Ten universities, two liberal arts schools, and two community colleges across the upper Midwest of the United States. In the meantime, thank you for joining me today. I'll see you in class, online, or during Zoom office hours if you drop by with a question. Stay healthy, have a safe and a productive week. With special regards from Onyx, the Catwood Am, 
so long, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now. You've just heard a podcast from WSTKS FM Worldwide, digital collaborative learning for the 21st century.